away with you. Frank. <laughs> she said it, so I knew, but I was like, what's she doing? I can't tell what time it is because that clock is three minutes. Seven minutes. Seven minutes. Okay. I'm going to call the regular meeting of the Board of Aldermen to order on Tuesday, May 14th, 2024 at 7.32 p.m. in the Aldermanic Chamber. <coughs> The prayer will be offered by City Clerk Dan Healy and Alderman Thibodeau will lead us in the Pledge to the Flag. Almighty God, we have the high honor and the serious duty to manage the affairs of our beloved city. Fill us, O oh God, with a spirit of unity and understanding which enables us to face our multiple problems with a serene mind, with justice and charity for all, so that any and all decisions made by us will always be for the betterment and greater happiness of all our fellow citizens. So help us God. Amen. Amen. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Let's start the meeting by taking a roll call attendance, please. Alderman O'Brien. Alderman Timmons. Here. Alderman Moran. Here. Alderman Thibodeau. Here. Alderman Govea. Here. Alderman Lopez. Here. I've been here the whole time. <laughs> Alderman Sullivan. Here. Alderman Clements. Here. Alderman Senate. Here. Alderman Jetty. Here. Alderman Tivo. Here. Alderman Klee. Here. Alderman Dowd. Present. Alderman Kelly. Here. Alderman Wilshire. Here. 14 present, one absent. Alderman O'Brien is under the weather, so that's why he is not here this evening. Also joining us this evening is Mayor Jim Donches and Corporation Counsel Steve Bolton. Mayor, did you wish to address the board this evening? Oh. <clears throat> Yes, Madam President, thank you. So the first thing I wanted to discuss is the proposed fiscal year 2025 budget, which is on your desks. Um, this, it, first, the first thing you may notice about it is that the presentation has improved considerably. Uh, we're trying to make it more accessible, more readable by members of the public and members of the Board of Aldermen, more understandable. If you recall back a few years ago what it used to be with no explanation, no, uh, uh, no, uh, none of the detail that's provided or none of the analysis that's provided within the budget here, uh, within the budget book, uh, you will see, I believe, a very significant improvement. And for that improvement and for the preparation work on the budget itself, I'd like to thank Megan Karen from my office, John Griffin, and Tim Cummings, all of whom worked uh, very considerably to uh, get this to you tonight. In terms of an overview, the budget is up 3.7 percent. Uh, the challenges that exist, the main, the biggest challenge that existed was, or that exists, is the increase in medical care for city employees, which is up uh, 4.6 million dollars. Uh, this is. Um, a, a 13 to 14 percent increase. Uh, we, in talking with our consultants uh, on health care, have learned that this is typical. In fact, I think Manchester is up 16 or 18 percent. So, health care is uh, definitely uh, continues to be a, you know, a significant uh, expense and a significant challenge for municipal budgets. Uh, I think across New Hampshire. Um, I thought I would mention a couple of items. Uh, certainly the Budget Committee, and I understand the review starts on Thursday night. We'll get into many of the details. Um, in the Fire Department, we made a couple of changes. We First, we added money to the Fire Department budget to uh, provide periodic, regular cancer screenings and health uh, and, and physicals for firefighters on a broader basis than exists now. Uh, this would cover the entire workforce as opposed to simply the specialty units, uh, which is the custom right now. Uh, the 
purpose for this is that, the reason for this is that statistics and just experience shows that firefighters face a more higher risk for various health, serious health problems such as cancer and, uh, and other um, diseases. So this will help to uh, uh, detect those type of health problems at an early stage in an effort to make sure that they can be uh, corrected or imp uh, maximize the chance that they can be uh, corrected before they get too serious. Um, but we did, there was a, the Fire Commission proposed that the, some of the top positions in the fire department receive raises over and above what the normal ordinance would permit. Um, we are in the middle of a salary study covering all the non-union, the so-called uh, exempt positions across city government. And rather than grant those uh, very significant raises, we thought we would, we should wait until the salary study comes in, which will look at municipalities in our region and uh, before making any decisions to significantly change compensation for any uh, non, non-union uh, exempt employees. So there was a cut there, but overall we added to the budget, I think, because we put in the, um, the health care. They also added a captain, which uh, was proposed and is passed along in my budget. We added some uh, civilian personnel in the police department at their request to help with prosecutions and other uh, duties that they have. Uh, we uh, increased or continued using uh, this budget, the social worker in the Leah, uh, Leah Elliott in the police department, which is something that they have been very happy with in terms of helping to diffuse uh, some uh, non criminal situations where mental health or other uh, distress is involved. So we continued that. Um, those are some of the details in the budget, but overall the budget is up 3.7%. And going back to the beginning, the major challenge uh, was the, is the increase in the healthcare costs uh, or the medical costs. I also wanted to mention a couple other resolutions uh, that are on tonight's agenda, Madam President. R24030, Nine, I believe, uh, is the resolution which would create a bonding plan. Uh, this we discussed this in some detail uh, at the personnel committee, but would would uh, create a plan suggesting a limitation of thirty million dollars per year maximum over the next five years. The purpose for this is, of course, that as we've discussed before, that the projects that the worthwhile projects that uh, have been proposed uh, in various, uh, in, across this, the city, the amount of those projects greatly exceeds what we believe we can afford in terms of a borrowing and then paying back principal and interest. So this would limit the uh, expenditure or the, the uh, bonding to $30 million a year. And as we discussed in the personnel committee, this is a plan. It could be it, it could be varied. If it was 32 million one year and 28 million the next, I mean the point is we're trying to um, create a structure for thinking about how to approach the capital projects. And of course, uh, you, Madam President, and I, uh, as approved by the Board of Aldermen, have this uh, ad hoc capital debt committee. Uh, we're looking at all the projects and we'll be making some recommendations regarding uh, priorities across these various projects. Uh, Madam President, I also wanted to mention R24053, which is the development agreement for the Mohawk Tannery. Uh, again, this has been discussed uh, many times, but we have uh, reached a pro uh, an agreement uh, with the EPA. They're contributing considerably to the cleanup of the f former Mohawk Tannery site. Uh, we have uh, a developer who will contribute to the cleanup costs as well and will develop uh, uh, housing on the site, uh, both rental and uh, condominiums for sale. Uh, this will include the 
a creation of affordable housing units in the rental section and a, I think it's $2.3 million contribution to the city's affordable housing trust fund uh, uh, to uh, help on the um, ownership side. This was endorsed unanimously by the Finance Committee, and I hope that uh, you will proceed with approval of that development agreement so that we be can begin to clean up this polluted site that has existed there for the 40 years since the tannery closed. Finally, Madam President, I wanted to mention that um, we have Dawn Enright here. Um, Dawn, Ms. Enright uh, is currently the treasurer tax collector for the city of Concord, uh, has previously worked for the city of Nashville for quite a while, uh, as well as uh, the town of Derry. Uh, and uh, I've nominated her for the position of treasurer tax collector to succeed uh, Mr. Griffin beginning in a couple of weeks. Um, Mr. Griffin will be uh, uh, retiring uh, soon although we will bring him back on a part-time basis to help with the, uh, uh, our transition with um, Ms. Enright and just to assist with the uh, financial issues for a, period, a temporary period of time. But um, Ms. Enright was endorsed unanimously by the Personnel Committee. As I said before, I don't think we could find a person in New Hampshire who is more qualified than the, for this position than the treasure tax collector of our next largest city, uh, that being Concord. Uh, so uh, we, uh, so I, you know, I highly endorse her, and I, th I thank the personnel committee for uh, endorsing her as well. And I hope you will approve her tonight, and she's here to be sworn in, I presume. Finally, Madam President, I do have to leave early tonight, and so I, in a few minutes, I will have to depart, which I apologize for, but. Um, uh, I don't think you, if you need me for any questions or anything, uh, I would ask that you simply ask them now. And um, other than that, I just wish you a good evening and um, thank you very much. Thank you, Mayor. Response to the remarks of the Mayor. I'll start over here. Alderman Dowd. Yes, I just want to thank the Mayor and his team. Uh, in past years, I always had them give me a three ring binder with a notebook. This year I asked that the entire budget committee get a three ring binder to make it easier to go through the process. So, and also the formatting is, is much better than it's been. So thank you for all that, Mayor. Anyone else? Seeing none. Recognition period. None. <laughs> Reading minutes of previous meetings, there being no objection, I will declare the minutes of the special and regular Board of Aldermen meetings of April 9th. April 22nd and April 23rd, 2024, be accepted, placed <coughs> on file, and the reading suspended. Communications requiring only procedural actions and written reports from liaisons. Communication has been received from Lisa Photo, Director of Public Works, regarding referral from Board of Public Works R-24-035. Communication has been received from Sam Durfee, Planning Manager, regarding fiscal year 25 Capital Improvements Program Planning Board Recommendation. Communication has been received from Sam Durfee, Planning Manager, regarding referral from the Board of Aldermen on Resolution R-24-036 relative to easements for the Riverfront Project. <coughs> Communication has been received from Sam Durfee, Planning Manager, regarding referral from the Board of Aldermen on Resolution R-24 dash 053 authorizing the city of Nashua to enter into a master development agreement with Blaylock Holding LLC. Communication has been received from Lisa Photo, Director of Public Works, regarding referrals from Board of Aldermen R-24-041, R-24-042, R-24-046. Communication has been received from Jill Stansfield, Parking Manager, regarding communication relative to increasing fees and fines in the parking ordinance. There being no objection, I will accept the communications and place them on file. Public period, period for public comment relative to items to be acted upon this evening. We have no one qualified signed up to speak. Communications requiring final approval. Communication has been received from 
Mayor Jim Donches regarding multi-year contract award ChemServe environmental analysis. Sorry. <laughs> Alderman Timmons. Thank you, Madam President. Move to approve a three-year contract with ChemServe environmental analyst of Milford, New Hampshire for water quality testing services at Nashua landfill sites for the solid waste department in an amount not to exceed 300000 Funding will be through the department, 168 Solid Waste Fund 55699, other contracted services, general <coughs> fund. You've heard the motion. Is there discussion on that motion? Seeing none, all those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? That motion carries. <coughs> Communication has been received from Mayor Jim Dontris regarding multi-year contract award, North Coast Services, LLC. Alderman Clemens. Thank you, Madam President. I move to approve a three-year contract between the City of Nashua and North Coast Services, LLC of Concord, New Hampshire, for the processing and disposal of universal wastes in the amount not to exceed 225000 that's 75000 a year, Funding will be through Department 168 Solid Waste Fund 55699 Other Contracted Services slash General Fund. You've heard that motion. Is there discussion on that motion? Seeing none, all those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? That motion carries. Communication has been received from Mayor Jim Dontris regarding multi-year contract award on Dust Mechanical and Appliance LLC. Alderman Thibodeau. Yes, thank you, Madam President. I'd like to make a motion to approve a three-year contract between the City of Nashua and Ondas Mechanical and Appliance LLC of Merrimack, New Hampshire for refrigerant recovery, CFCs, services at the Nashua Recycling Center in the amount not to exceed 60000 20000 annually. Funding will be through Department 168, Solid Waste, Fund 55699, other contracted services, general fund. You've heard the motion, discussion on that motion? Seeing none, all those in favor say aye. Aye. Opposed? That motion carries. Communication has been received from Mayor Jim Donches regarding multi-year contract award, Winfield Alloy. Alderman Clay. Uh, thank you, Madam President. I motion to approve a three-year contract between the City of Nashua and Windfall Alloy Incorporated of Atkinson, New Hampshire for the recycling of scrap metal at the Four Hills Landfill, pending approval of the FY25 operating budget. Revenue generated is $360,000. That's $120,000 per year. Funding will be through Department 168 Solid Waste Fund 44289, sale of recyclables. You've heard the motion. Discussion on that motion? Seeing none, all those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? That motion carries. Communication has been received from Doria Brown, Energy Manager, regarding natural gas supply rate. Hello, Woman Kelly. Thank you, Madam President. I would like to move to accept, place on file, and approve the reduction of the natural gas rate from eight dollars and well, eight dollars point eight point one five. Let's go there per <laughs> decatherm to seven point six per decatherm. The revised rates will take effect in December 2024 through November 2026. You've heard the motion. Discussion on that motion? Seeing none, all those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? That motion carries. <coughs> Petitions? None. Nominations, appointments, and elections? Business and Industrial Development Authority. Derek D. Gagden, new appointment, term to expire May 28, 2027, 172 Marsh Road, Pelham, New Hampshire, 03076. Conservation Commission, Robert L. Pinsonalt, new alternate appointment, term to expire May 28, 2027, 9 Bancroft Street, Apartment 9, Nashua, New Hampshire, 03060. Greeley Park Advisory Commis Committee, Allison Gallopu, new appointment, term to expire May 14th, 2027, 131 Colgate Road, Nashua, New Hampshire, 03064. Tax Increment Financing Advisory Board, Angela M. Spilio's reappointment, term to expire September 30th, 2025, 
six N Pepperell Road, Hollis, New Hampshire, zero three zero four nine. Zoning Board, Joseph J. Patry, new appointment, term to expire May twenty eighth, twenty twenty seven. 233 Cannon Gate 3 Road, Nashua, New Hampshire, 03063. <coughs> there being no objection, I will accept the appointments by the mayor as read and refer them to the Personnel Administrative Affairs Committee. Reports of committees. There being no objection, I will declare the report of the March 25th, 2024 and the April 22nd, 2024 Budget Review Committee to be accepted and placed on file. There being no objection, I'll declare the report of the April 1st personnel, April 1st, 2024 Personnel Administrative Affairs Committee be accepted and placed on file. There being no objection, I'll declare the report of the April 8th, 2024 Joint Meeting of Planning and Economic Development Committee and Personnel Administrative Affairs Committee be accepted and placed on file. There being no objection, I will declare the report of the April 10th, 2024 Penichuk Water Special Committee be accepted and placed on file. There being no objection, I'll declare the report of the April 15th, 2024 Human Affairs Committee be accepted and placed on file. There being no objection, I'll declare the report of the April 17th, 2024 Finance Committee be accepted and placed on file. And there being no objection, I will declare the report of the April 24th, 2024 Committee on Infrastructure be accepted and placed on file. Confirmation of Mayor's appointments. Board of Assessors. There being no objection, I will confirm the new appointment of Charles Dobbins, 47 Dogwood Drive, Unit 20, Nashua, to the Board of Assessors. Is Mr. Dobbins here this evening? He will be sworn in at a later date. Mine Falls Park Advisory Committee. There being no objection, I will confirm the new appointment of Lon Holberger, 5 Wellesley Road, Nashua, with a term to expire April 9th, 2027. Is Mr. Holberger here? He will be sworn in at a later date. Nashua Arts Commission. There being no objection, I will confirm the reappointment of Lindsay Rinaldi, 705 Belmont Street, Belmont, Mass., with a term to expire April 1st, 2027. Lindsay, I don't see her here this evening. She will be sworn in at a later date. Nash Nash go ahead, sorry. sorry. Nashua Riverfront TIF Committee. <clears throat> there being no objection, I will confirm the reappointment of Eric Drewart. 52 Main Street, Unit 206, Nashville, with a term to expire September 30th, 2025. Is Mr. Drewart here this evening? He will be sworn in at a later date. Treasurer, Tax Collector. There being no objection, I will confirm Don Enright, 16 Chase Road, London, Derry, New Hampshire, to the position of Treasurer, Tax Collector with an indefinite term. And I know Ms. Enright is here. Would you please come up and take the oath of office? Raise your right hand, please. Do you solemnly swear that you will faithfully and impartially discharge and perform all of the duties that come upon you as treasurer tax collector of the city of Nashua according to the best of your abilities and agreeably to the rules and regulations of the city charter and the constitution laws of the state of New Hampshire? So help you God. Thank you. Congratulations. Thank you. Unfinished business resolutions. So Alderman Lopez. I'd like to make a motion um, to remove from the table R24022. Motion is to remove R24022 from the table. All those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? That motion carries. Third reading of R-24-022, authorizing the mayor to apply for and expend the Community Development Block Grant CDBG in Home Investment Partnership Program funds for fiscal year 2025. Alderman Lopez. I'd like to make a motion to amend R-22, I'm sorry, R-24022, by replacing with the golden rod copy of amendments that were made at the Human Affairs Committee. The motion is to amend with the golden rod copy. Could you give us a, a brief summary of what the amendments are? Yeah, um, we had to ad make adjustments to the different dispositions of how much we were allocating because we didn't know exactly what money we would get yet. So it's kind of part of the process. Is first we have to open it, have the public hearing, and all the information, and then we have to adjust as we go. Motion is to amend. 
Further discussion? All those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? That motion carries. Alderman Lopez. And back again. <coughs> I'd like to make a motion for a final passage of R24022 as amended. You've heard the motion? Discussion on that motion? Seeing none, all those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Nay. Okay, that motion carries, and resolution 2422 is declared duly adopted as amended. Second reading of R24. Dash 033 proposing an amendment to the city charter relative to adding two additional members to the Board of Health. Alderman Moran. Uh, thank you, Madam President. First, I would like to move uh, to strike from the agenda as posted uh, on the City of Nashville website the language Board of Health with unfavorable recommendation. And I'd like to speak to that motion. Alderman Moran. Thank you, Madam President. After uh, consultation with my colleague, Alderman Clemens, review of the minutes of the Board of Health uh, and the review of the um, meetings themselves. Uh, the Board of Health did not take a formal vote uh, and uh, transmit that vote to the uh, Board of Aldermen. Uh, they did have an informal discussion where they were in agreement that they didn't uh, support the recommendation, but a formal vote was not taken. And in the spirit of transparency, I think uh, it is important that it be reflected as such on a publicly posted agenda. Okay. Was there a motion there? Y yes, to strike. <laughs> to strike. Okay. You've heard the motion. Alderman Tebow. Um, yeah, thank you, Madam President. I just want to know w why that ended up on the, why it ended up like that. Like, why was it, like, who did that and why, if anyone um, knows. I'm just curious why someone will put they had an unfavorable if it <clears throat> wasn't, in fact, an unfavorable. Mayor. Yes. Because I had called up over at the Division of Public Health, and I, first of all, I looked at their minutes to see what it was, and it just said discussion. There was no motion. So I called up. Um, Director Bagley was on vacation. So then I reached out to one of the committee members and was told that it was, they did not agree with the um, two members. And where we referred it to that committee I, or to that board, I needed to put something on the agenda so that at least it was discussed. Okay. Madam President, through you to uh, Ms. Graham, uh, and the member uh, verified they didn't take a vote. Or, Correct. Thank you. Yes. So you heard the motion. The motion is to strike. Any further discussion on that motion? Seeing none, all those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Aye. That, that motion carries. So I will make it. Uh, I will schedule a public hearing on Tuesday, May 28, 2024. Oh, with Madam President, I still have to make the next motion. Yeah, there's one more. There's one more, okay, sorry. <laughs> Go ahead. Thank you. Um, Madam President, uh, give me one second to find the language from the Corporation Council. Yes, I would like to make a motion that R24-033 is necessary and scheduling of a new properly noticed public hearing following the public hearing, um, the transmittal, transmission of the resolution to the city clerk who shall then follow the required notification actions of the resolution. And if I could speak to that motion. <coughs> Alderman Moran. Um, there was some, um, I hate doing this, but Alderman Jetty, a very fine, uh, detailed person pointed out some technical errors in the legislation, and we also didn't follow the process in regards to transmitting um, the, oh, Alderman, oh, not Alderman, Corporation Council. There was no error in the drafting of the legislation. Oh, okay. The process wasn't followed, is that? That's correct. Is that okay? All right. Legislative process. <laughs> the process wasn't followed appropriately, um, and we missed the time frame to transmit the information to the city clerk within seven days. Um, so I'm asking that we um, start essentially over from scratch so we can have the public hearing and then transmit the information um, to the city clerk within that time frame. And then the city clerk has a time frame to follow to s transmit that to the Secretary of State and the other uh, duly authorized departments. Alderman Lopez. Um, through the president to the um, maker of the motion, 
when you say start from scratch, you mean for the public hearing, or you mean we have to vote on whether it's necessary, refer to committee and all that, or do you mean just the public hearing? No, we have to start it all over. Okay. We missed the, we missed the vote. Okay, Alderman Tebow. Thank you, Madam President. Um, this is a piece of legislation I haven't been for um, from the beginning, mostly because from what I've heard is the Board of Health isn't for it, whether it's, it's, it's been a formal vote or not. Um, you know, we have a great Board of Health. They do a great job here. Um, you know, I don't see where something's broken, so why add? And so if, if we're adding, I was thinking, well, if you, if, you know, even five isn't, if we're, we're looking just to make a, a bigger board, then five's not enough. If we're looking for spe specific specialties, why those two and not thinking about other ones? Um, you know, I was really thinking hard today if I should amend this and add why not a clinical oncologist? A lot of us are dealing with, with cancer issues. Um, I also think what about a pharmacist? Because they deal with health when it comes to medicine. We could add a lot of different specialties that could really add to the Board of Health. So I've really been thinking about amending this and adding two more. Um, but since we're starting over and since it has to go to public hearing, I would like to hear from the Board of, the people who are on the Board of Health. I was hoping, you know, we could hear from them because I want to know why they're against it. Um, and when people tell me, well, it's just because it's the way it is, and they, you know, they want to keep control with the three, I want to hear from them. Like, give me a good reason why it should stay three. That's what I want to hear. And I haven't yet heard it. Um, I mean, I, I obviously know why Alderman Moran wants, wants it to change, but I don't know why they don't want it to change. So I would like to hear that from them at some point. And I know a couple of them spoke out in committee, but they, the things they've said they haven't convince me. I did look at Manchester's Board of Health today and I did see that they have five committee members, uh, one being a nurse. I don't think there's a specific social worker spot, but there was a nurse on there. Um, so I don't know, maybe it's a good idea or not. I'm going to let it go through. I'm not going to amend it tonight. I'll vote for it to go to the public hearing and we'll see where it goes from there. Thank you. Alderman Lopez. I would just note at the public hearing that we did hold, but unfortunately did not follow the process for a um, charter amendment. Um, I believe that a member of the public health, the president of the Board of Public Health, listed exactly the reasons that the former speaker mentioned as why he was opposed to it, that he didn't want to make it too big. He didn't want to add a number of, he basically suggested that if we add one medical specialty, then we would be adding all of them. And this was discussed in the committee when we favorably, we recommended final passage for it. Alderman Tebow. Thank you, Madam President. I was at one, one of the meetings because I did speak out against it at one of the meetings, and I said the same thing. Why don't we add all kinds of different specialties? Why, why just these two? I mean, we could ask an infectious disease doctor. Um, I mean, there's a bunch of different things we could add that would make, make it a better conversation amongst the medical community, whether it's a doctor, social worker, RN, pharmacist, whatever. I mean, we could make this, you know, board of 20 if we wanted to. Um, you know, I think one of the reasons I heard was with, with three, you know, if one's out, there's really, you know, how are you going to vote on something? And, you know, it, it didn't make, make sense to have it so small, so let's make it bigger, but why these specialties? And I did hear the people that, the, the, the person that came, and I don't know if it was Dr. Storis or the other doctor, and, and I heard that exact thing, but to me that wasn't a good enough reason um, as far as the, um, they don't want to make it too big, because three is awfully small. Um, you know, it doesn't take much to not have, have a quorum there. So, um, so. I, you know, I don't buy that reason. I want a little bit more background from the Board of Health if they want to uh, actually keep it at three. Alderman Moran. Uh, thank you, Madam President. Um, one of the, I, I don't paraphrase my own words, I guess, but at the Personnel Administrative Affairs Committee, we did talk about that slippery slope, red herring type of thing. One of the conversations around it was, you know, oncologists, right? Um, orthopedics, et cetera. What is it that they all went to? just like internal medicine that's on the board and just like pediatrician that's on the board. They went to medical school. They had that foundation uh, of their physician career uh, and then they diverge into a specialty. And, and the research presented uh, at the um, Personnel uh, Administrative Affairs Committee, it's the foundations that informs them on how they make their decisions. Because you might need to go to an oncologist for cancer-related aspects, but it might be the ED physician who notices it because they all have that foundation um, training and understanding of the, of the body to make those specialty referrals. Much like a social worker has that foundation 
training and experience to make referrals to their specialists because there's also specialists within social work and same thing within our, and with registered nurses there's also specialists within the nursing uh, system that's why you have that foundation license um, where if you really look at you know it's not a licensed physician but we're asking for a licensed registered nurse and licensed social worker um, but it's the foundation is what we're gearing at because we know how to refer within the healthcare system to the specialists based on our foundation training in the, in the field. Alderman Sullivan. Thank you, Madam President. Uh, just for clarification, as we go through this process, essentially the, I, I call it the end of the road, but ultimately, if the Board of Aldermen approves this, then it goes on the ballot, correct? And then the people decide. Is that the ultimate, uh, is, that, is that where this ultimately ends up if we keep approving it? Thank you. And then, and then the electorate decides what happens, correct? I would defer to Attorney Bolton. That's correct. Okay. Alderman Tebow. Thank you, Madam President. Um, I would think that all people that are in medicine don't necessarily go to uh, med medical school, like a pharmacist, right? I don't know if they go through how, what their training is. I don't know what it is. Or physical therapist or, you know, obviously not exactly the same. Um, and obviously we have a dentist on the board. I, I doubt he had the same kind of training as an oncologist. I could be wrong there, but obviously I don't know it that well. Um, but, you know, at the end of the day, I did say I would, I would support it today. Um, you know, it, it's, I mean, we could put everything on the ballot. Just let it, we don't have to vote on anything here. We just put everything on the ballot. Why, why us vote, right? Let the people vote, you know? Because somebody said today, we should have the barriers on the ballot. Well, let's put everything on the ballot. Why are we here? We could save 9,000 per person and just put everything on the ballot, right? That would be kind of chaotic because, you know, you get people voting who aren't actually paying attention to some of this stuff and, or the conversations that we're having today. Um, and that's when it gets, could be dangerous depending on what the, the ballot item might be, right? Um, you know, I didn't like the fact that I had a state rep kind of bully me into trying to vote for this. And I thought that was a little, uh, and I know you didn't have anything to do with that or anybody here had anything to do with it, but i like, nobody tells me how to vote. I vote on my own. We've all seen that here. I voted against and for things that nobody else has voted for or against. I'm, sometimes I'm on the losing side by a lot. Um, so um, I will support it tonight because since we're starting over, I'll, I'll let it go to public hearing and see what the public have to say about it. I'm, I'm willing to listen. So, Alderman Clemens. Yeah, thank you. Just to the, to the previous speaker, in regards to, the, to, to some of the comments about it being on the ballot, we have to put this on the ballot. We don't have a choice because it's a charter change. So it's not something that we're making, you know, if it were up to me, it wouldn't be on the ballot. I, I, th I think this board is capable of making that decision itself. But nevertheless, you change the city charter, that's how we do it. And this is a change to the city charter. So therefore, it goes to a, a the, the people to have the final say. That's how our charter is uh, enacted. <clears throat> so, um, so it, it you know it's kind of a red herring to say well, why don't we put everything on the ballot because we don't do that generally. It, it, it has to be either relative to the charter or I would say a very exceptional circumstance. Could you, uh, Mr. Clerk, uh, read the amendment or the motion? The motion. You, restate it? you could restate it. Um, yes, I would like to make a motion that R24-033 is necessary and scheduling of a new properly noticed public hearing is needed following the public hearing transmittal of the resolution to the city clerk who shall then follow the required notification actions of the resolution. <clears throat> okay, so a positive vote would be that it is necessary. A negative vote would be that it is not necessary. Are you looking for a roll call vote? I, uh, through you to Corporation Council, this needs to need be roll call. It's not required, but anyone can ask for it. A voice vote's fine. Okay. Uh, can I ask for a roll call? You can ask for a roll call. <laughs> I just want to make sure we get home. <laughs> Alderman Dowd. Yeah, I just want to say that no time was mentioned uh, for that public hearing, and we have a Board of Aldermen meeting that night at 7.30. It says what? on here May 28th on the agenda. Not in this motion, though. Oh. 
Oh, it's in the schedule. It's in the resolution to be scheduled. What time? Well, I think Not the, the president is going to make that announcement. If That's well passed. Passed. <laughs> All right. How about you wait? <laughs> okay. So the uh, there has been a roll call requested. Would the clerk please call the roll? Alderman Timmons. Yes. Alderman Moran. Yes. <clears throat> Alderman Thibodeau. Yes. Alderman Govea. Yes. Alderman Lopez. Yes. Alderman Sullivan. Yes. Alderman Clemens. Yes. Alderman Senate. Yes. Alderman Jetty. Yes. Alderman Tebow. Yes. Alderman Clee. Yes. Alderman Dowd. Yes. Alderman Kelly. Yes. Alderman Wilshire. Yes. 14 yeas, zero nays. That motion carries, and we will schedule a public hearing on Tuesday, May 28, 2024, with further discussion and disposition, disposition at the Board of Aldermen meeting following thereafter. So we will hold this meeting prior to our next full board meeting. 7 p.m. 7 p.m. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> Second reading of R-24-035. Changing the purpose of up to $2,200,000 of unexpended bond proceeds from the design and construction of a Division of Public Works office facility to the design of a Public Works Division garage. Alderman Depp. I'd like to make a motion for final passage of R24035 by roll call pursuant to Charter <coughs> Section 49. I'd like to speak to it. Alderman Depp. Um, we in the past have always had concerns about going through the process of getting a bond funded and then doing the uh, plan for whatever the project is and then hiring a construction manager to do it and then the bond doesn't end up being the correct amount. In this instance, uh, <clears throat> we have monies left over from the building of the DPW building, office building. The bond has already been sold so the money can be transferred to a similar project. And in this instance, it would be for the planning of the new garage, which has had discussions in the ad hoc committee and capital improvements committee extensively. And what this would do would allow us to get a plan for the building and, and have it ready to go. Um, if, if, if we get the plan now, we can probably do it for this amount of money. If we wait, it's good, definitely going to be more than that. So uh, I, with this new procedure of trying to get bonds closer to their actual required value, this makes sense that we can get that building design. I think um, the only question on this building is whether or not when it will be built. But if we have all the plans, we're ready to go and, and can then at that point, whenever it is, hire a construction manager and get the final pricing and do a uh, much bond closer to the actual amount. Alderman Kelly. Uh, thank you. Thank you for that explanation. I am torn on this. I feel like I would like to hear a discussion around potentially tabling it because the ad hoc committee is supposed to be coming back with a list of pr priorities uh, based on the bonding plan, which we're also going to have in front of us in a couple of motions. And my concern is if we put two and a half million into a design, we're now making sure that that's going to be on that list. If you guys decide differently, now we put that money into a design that's going to be put on the shelf for you know X number of years. So I think if it's not a very time sensitive thing, it wouldn't be a bad thing to put it on the table for now, have the ad hoc have that discussion, and then come back to it. Are you making that? Motion. And I'm not making the motion yet yeah, because I want to okay. allow people to have some discussion around it, um, but I'm happy to if people agree. Alderman Clements. Um, yes, through you to the previous speaker, um, did did you get a chance to speak to Director Photo about that? Not no. Yet. Um, I tend to I, I tend to agree with with that approach. Um, uh, I'll, I'll leave it at that, but I mean, we're not supposed to really debate table, but I'll leave it at that. <laughs> there's no motion yet. There's, motion, there's no motion to allow for the debate first. Alderman Moran? Uh, thank you, Madam President. Um, obviously, I, and 
sponsor this, but then um, before I could watch the ad hoc um, meeting, I, it, I read the article from the Nashua Inc. Link about the um, ask for a homeless shelter, and I'm not saying it would go to a homeless shelter, but then I read, watched the meeting and I saw all the uh, other projects that were being presented, um, and I'm, of course, focused on the homeless shelter being more important than anything else. Um, that was a little bit facetious too, so don't take it as uh, anything other than that. But I think it is a good idea to potentially um, tread slowly uh, when there are already some very decent projects being presented, and <coughs> it's not necessarily a, we need to rush kind of thing. Alderman Gouveia. Thank you, Madam President. So at the beginning of this legislation, uh, I sat down with Director Photo and Lauren Byers at DPW to talk about this money here. And that was one of the things I brought up with them was that ad hoc committee on the bonding. And I straight up told them I can't guarantee you that's even on my list for the next five years. And they seem to be aware that that would potentially be the situation. So I'm not too, too concerned solely because like I asked them, because that was one of my concerns as well, is if we do this now, does this handcuff us? Do you, are you expecting that I put this in next year's capital or the year after? And, and their answer was, well, that would be up to the commission members. Alderman Clemens. Oh. Uh, Madam President, motion to table uh, R2435. The motion is to table R24035. Can we do by roll call? Please. By roll call. Would the clerk please call the roll? Alderman Timmons. Yes. Alderman Moran. Yes. Alderman Thibodeau. No. Alderman Govea. No. Alderman Lopez. Yes. Alderman Sullivan. No. Alderman Clemens. Yes. Alderman Senate? Yes. Alderman Jetty? Yes. Alderman Tebow? No. Alderman Clee? No. Alderman Dowd? No. Alderman Kelly? Yes. Alderman Wilshire? Yes. Eight yeas, six nays. And that motion carries. Second reading of R-24-036 relative to easements for the Riverfront project. Alderman Sullivan. Thank you, Madam President. I'd like to make a motion for final passage of R-24-036. Motion is for final passage. Discussion on that motion. Seeing none, all those in favor say aye. Aye. Opposed? That motion carries. Oh, I'm sorry, and resolution 2436 is declared duly adopted. Second <coughs> reading of R-24-039, supporting a limited five-year bonding plan. Alderman Senate. Thank you, Madam President. I'd like to make a motion for final passage of R-24039. Motion is for final passage. Discussion on that motion. Alderman Jetty. Uh, thank you. Uh, so I, I'm, uh, I'm going to vote for this, but I would like to um, say something about it, and that is that, that uh, you know, this, um, this resolution, um, you, know, <clears throat> you know, supporting a limited five-year bonding plan, you know, the resolution, you know, was... Uh, you know, suggested by the mayor. Uh, the mayor wants to um, try to get a handle on the the bonding that we're doing, uh, because as he pointed out, he he's, he's afraid that the uh, that the uh, you know expenses of um, of the bonding and uh, the interest, etc., you know, may end up with a, a burden. Uh, too heavy for the taxpayers, and and I applaud that that thought. Um, you know, it. You know, I think it's a step in the right direction. I think that. You know, it's it's happened. I, I think uh, too many times where. 
and we adopt the budget and <coughs> then uh, during the year different things come up and uh, you know they all you know they're they're great they're great projects you know they seem um, you know really uh, necessary and things that we ought to do and we all you know agree that it's something that we ought to do and the only way to pay for it is to borrow the money and before you know before we know it you know the bonding keeps increasing uh, so so you know this I think is um, you know I, I was on the uh, uh, capital improvements uh, plan committee and uh, you know I, I saw that uh, you know projects um, you know came up after you know the the meetings that the, uh, the committee had and um, you know something you know there'd be a special meeting called so that we that we could uh, you know uh, rate the project and uh, I remember during one meeting uh, we were told it you know they, they rate these projects you know a B C and, and I remember being told well it doesn't really matter how you rate it um, but there's uh, you know, in order to get the bond we, we have to demonstrate that it was rated and it could be a C project but it you know if the administration feels that that project is important it it jumps ahead of the A projects um, so I was a little discouraged about you know what role the Capital Improvements Committee was really playing, and um, <coughs> so you know those those things have happened, and uh, you know I think this is you know a good thing. It's it's an attempt to try to get control over that, but you know this is uh, this is you know really uh, it's really not binding. You know we could you know a project could come up. And uh, we really need it, and we could vote to go ahead with the project in spite of this resolution. But the resolution is a good idea, it's a good planning tool, and that, that's why I, I, I'm supporting it. You know, it, it's like when you, you know, homeowners, you know, it, well, let me say, you know, the, the burden on the taxpayers, um, you know, I, I have to say that the tax rate in Nashua is not unreasonable. When you look at the tax rate, you know, the tax rate in Nashua is somewhere in the middle of, of communities in the state. There are a lot of communities that have a much higher tax rate. There are some that have a lower, but not many. Um, so our tax rate is not out of control. Uh, you know, the recent reevaluation, you know, because it shifted the burden more to the residentials than the commercial properties because the value of commercial properties has gone down. You know, that resulted in a lot of people getting a higher tax bill, but it, it really wasn't because of the tax, uh, you know, the budget was, was not the problem. The, the, the problem was the, you know, the, the burden of that, that budget being, you know, how it's shared among commercial and residential uh, taxpayers you know the the real problem with the tax burden on our homeowners you know has to do with the state because the state continually passes down to the cities and towns you know the burden of government the uh, the towns the cities and towns are limited as to what revenue we, we can get. We're, we're limited to basically the, uh, the property tax. And the state, you know, the state has the business profits tax, the uh, business enterprise tax, you know, they have uh, the, the interest and dividends tax. Uh, and those taxes, generally speaking, you know, create a, a larger burden among pe more people who are better able to afford those taxes 
than our homeowners can. But the state keeps cutting those taxes, and they're planning on eliminating the interest and dividends tax, which is really a tax on people who have a lot of money. And the, so the burden of, the, of, the, of running the state uh, and the, all the governments, all the cities uh, and towns, you know, keeps falling more and more uh, on the uh, homeowners, the property, real estate property owners. And uh, even the education, you know, the Supreme Court said that education, providing an adequate education was a responsibility of the state. So what did the state do? The state said, okay, we're going to have a statewide property tax. So when you look at your homeowners, when you look at your tax bill, you look, you'll see there's a portion of the tax bill is for the statewide property tax. That's the state's way of paying for education. So it's still being paid by you know, the, the, the local property owners. So that, that's the real problem with the tax burden that our property owners are having. Um, having said all of that, I think this is a step in the right direction and I'm going to support it. But in order to achieve tax equity, there's a lot more work to be done and I think it's <coughs> work that has to be done by the state. Thank you. Alderman Dowd. Yeah, I, I agree that um, trying to get a handle on, on bonding and is a good idea. And originally my concern with this legislation was that it was um, so solid that you, it couldn't be modified. And I thought that if, if an emergency came up and we had to bond something, not only would we have to pass the bonding resolution, but we'd also have to override this. And after talking to the mayor, that's not true. This is a plan, and if an emergency comes up and we have to bond something else, we can. And if we can, we could possibly shift another project later. And so there's some flexibility. So I think it's a good idea to, to get a handle on, on capital spending, and so I'm going to support this. And, and I think based on everything I've heard about this legislation, I think it's... Uh, worthy to pass. The ad hoc committee is, is looking at projects right now. We have more projects than we can fund to meet this goal, but we can also plan over five years. And it seems in the past we were always planning for the next six months to a year and not thinking about the future. This helps us get locked into the future. Alderwoman Kelly. Uh, thank you. I had uh, similar concerns around what happens here and I pushed it through from the committee because I think generally getting a good sense of what we are going to plan to spend makes sense. What I'm concerned about and I wanted to ask potentially uh, through you to Corporation Council is the wording of it. I had that same reaction in our conversation at the um, committee around does this tire hands and the wording is it says you know to support the attached general fund document which limits bonding. So we consider softening it because I'm concerned that what's going to happen is it's going to get in front of good governance. We have a huge thing <coughs> that we have to adjust. I think Alderman Clement said something like, well, what if we only spend 20 the first year? And then the next year, there's something that comes up that's really big that has to actually be fixed. Are we going to start getting into almost a spending cap scenario where we might be liable from a legal, legal standpoint um, to this document? It was a long question. <laughs> <laughs> It's a general rule of legislative governance that a legislative body cannot tie its own hands or the hands of its successors. So you cannot pass something that says our successors cannot override it or repeal it or retract it. So I, I, I don't think you have that concern. The only exception would be where you get a third party uh, having a vested interest. So when you approve a contract, third party is the other contracting party. Well, the city is then bound to the terms of the contract. Similarly with uh, a bonded debt, you're bound to the terms of that essentially loan to repay it. 
but this doesn't do any of those things. So yes, it is, you can ignore it, you can repeal it. Uh, I don't think that's a big concern. Okay, thank you. Alderman Moran. Oh, thank you, Madam President. Um, I would just say, I think it's a very good idea to get on a, a bonding plan. Um, you know, we can't control what happens at the state, no matter what party you are, you know, what, what's going on up there is insane. So, and they keep shifting down the cost to us. So we have to be the grown-ups in the room and have to make decisions about tightening our belts and making sure that we don't overspend or, um, and find projects that are the best value for um, the residents of the city. So that's why I want to support this. And just to Alderman Derry's point, I mean, they're getting rid of the interest and dividends tax. We all know who that helps. I paid four dollars in that tax last year, and I think I'm doing okay. They're giving multi-millionaire billionaires breaks, up, uh, and they're getting rid of this extra revenue. When that 80 million plus or whatever it was is going to be shifted down to us at some point, so we really have to get ahead of the ball on how much money we're going to be spending, uh, because it's just going to come back to us anyways. We're going to get less and less because <coughs> some very well-off people convinced some certain folks up at the state house they didn't want to pay their fair share. Alderman Lopez. Um, through the president to um, Alderman Dowd as in his role as chair of at least two committees, I think this is germane to, um, it's my understanding that you know when we have bonds, we have to use that money specifically for what the bond's original purpose was. But there's a limited degree of leeway where, I mean, for example, tonight we cont contemplated uh, adjusting the application of a bond from uh, an office building to a, a garage for vehicles. Um, so to that end, I know at least um, the Broad Street Parkway, there are additional like secondary projects. Does the description of all of the debt service we currently hold accurately reflect all the sub projects that have been done? Um, because we've been focusing a lot on what we're planning to do over the next five years. And I don't know if we're doing a, as good a job as we could be of explaining what we've done over the past five years or, or more with bonding. That's Alderman Dowd. That's a uh, multifaceted question. Um, and uh, I'm going to say something, and perhaps uh, the treasurer can chime in too. Um, you can, it, it, it all depends on whether on a project, whether the bond is sold or not sold. An example <coughs> the DPW building has money left over, the bond's already been sold. But because of the people that bought the bond, you have to allocate <coughs> that to something similar, related. So in this case, adding the, the maintenance building to the site, which is sort of in the plan from day one, um, would fit into that category. So you could spend that money for the plans for the new building. If you wanted to take that money from, from that project and allocate it to uh, the public health building they want to build? No, I don't think you can. And again, I'll, I don't know if the treasurer is still here. He's gone. I don't think you can do that. Uh, it, and it has to do with the rules of bonding. In the case of the McCarthy School, the 10 million that we approved some time ago, um, it, it, uh, it ha the bond has not been sold. So let's hypothetically say, I think it's going to be more than this, but I'm not going to go out on a limb until that I have the key to that building. <coughs> right now, we're in, we know we're not using two million of that 10 million, and probably much more. So because the bond's not sold, we just won't sell a bond to that 10 million value. That you, you can't use money that hasn't been bonded. So that could offset another project only by the fact that we're not bonding for that project. But you can't, you know, <coughs> you couldn't arbitrarily say, okay, well, hey, you got money in that bond, let's, uh, you know, build something else that's not related to schools. No, that, that won't work. So the bonding is very, very limited in what you can do. And it's a complex thing. I spent many years with treasure for debt, going over bonding, and, and uh, uh, so 
you, you have to be careful. It's only allowed, you can only do certain things with certain types of money. If it's bonded and we have the money now, we can use it for something related. If we haven't sold the bond, we can't use that money on any other project because it doesn't exist. We just won't sell the bond to that value. I, I hope that answers most of your question. Um, in, in this instance, uh, with the legislation we're talking about right now, uh, it, it's a good thing because it is flexible and according to the mayor and his philosophy and uh, and Mr. Griffin, who's the treasurer, um, it, it's it's a uh, well, former treasurer, I guess now. Um, you, you'll plan what makes up that $30 million. And in discussions with the mayor and Mr. Griffin, if, if, if this year we have so many projects, it goes to 32, next year it's 28. As long as we stick to the plan of 30 million a year for five years, it's a five year resolution, we're fine. Um, and the ad hoc committee has to determine what constitutes that $30 million in FY25. We have some money from schools that's in that part of the $30 million. We have other legislation we're going to be passing, and I don't want to get into it, that's going to be authorizing bonding that won't be spent till 27 to 31. That should not count against the $30 million in in FY25, even though we might pass it in 24, because it's not going to be spent then. And the biggest concern is not necessarily how much we're bonding every year. The biggest concern is what's the debt service. The debt service is the amount of money that's in the budget that we're paying <coughs> off capital projects. So it's, it's a little complex, and I think the other night when we added, uh, <coughs> asked Director Cummings to come up with that plan, that's critical as to how you come up with that 30 million. Hope that answers your question. I mean, I think I have a little more nuance, but maybe I'll save it for the budget when we talk about debt service. Okay. Alderman Clemens. Uh, I'm, I'm all set, Madam okay. President. Thank you. <clears throat> Motion before us is for final passage of resolution 2439. Further discussion? Seeing none, all those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? That motion carries, and resolution 2439 is declared duly adopted. Second reading of R-24-041, authorizing the mayor and city treasurer to issue bonds not to exceed $3,750,000 for the city's sewer infrastructure improvement in sewer and drain casting replacement programs. Alderman Dowd. Yeah, I'd like to make a motion for final passage of R24041 and I'd like to speak to it briefly. Alderman Dowd. We've had extensive discussions on this uh, uh, relative to the work that has to be done. Um, we're under, you know, federal guidelines and these are projects that need to be accomplished and, and they've been explained in very minute detail by the DPW, so I hope that this passes easily. Alderman Clemens. Yeah, too. Uh, just to uh, further that, um, this and the next resolution, the, they're bonds, but they're not general obligation bonds, so they don't count towards that $30 million. These are paid for by fees, uh, the sewer fees, so I just want the public to know that difference. Alderman Sullivan, <coughs> do you have your hand up? I did. Uh, thank you. I. Um, it was, it was my understanding when I initially read this resolution that these bonds were general obligation funds um, <coughs> and that the bonds would be sold in fiscal year. It, it says here in the analysis, this resolution authorizes the city to issue and sell general obligation bonds up to 3.75 million for the sewer <coughs> infrastructure. And the reason I wanted to bring that up was because in the resolution that we just passed, we're at 28.5 on, on bonding, and this puts us over the $30 million. Alderman Clements? Yeah, my, my understanding, and, and I asked this question, uh, I believe at the Finance Committee meeting, was that these, and, and the, the answer I got was that these were being paid for by fee uh, dollars and not 
uh, taxpayer dollars, but I, I don't know if uh, through you to Attorney Bolton, if he knows the answer to that, for sure. Well, you're correct and you're incorrect. <laughs> they okay. are being paid out of the uh, Wastewater Enterprise Fund, which is funded by the wastewater fees. But they are also general obligation yeah. bonds. So if we defaulted on that, presumably we would pay out of other available funds. But that's certainly not the plan. You all set, Alderman Sullivan? Um, I'm just not seeing that in the resolution. I'm sorry if I, if I missed it. Um, please point it out to me. I'm just not seeing it there. I don't think it has to be in the resolution. But the funding source will be through the Enterprise Fund. I think that's what Alderman Clemens was told, and that's my understanding of the plan and how it's, how it's essentially budgeted. But it doesn't have to say that. The authorizing resolution is for general obligation bonds. It doesn't say they'll be paid out of tax dollars or where they'll be paid. I'd like to make a motion to table until we figure this out. Roll motion call. is, sorry? Roll call. <coughs> motion is to table. Would the clerk call the roll? Alderman Timmons. No. Alderman Moran. Yes. Alderman <coughs> Thibodeau. Yes. Alderman Govea. Yes. Alderman Lopez. No. Alderman Sullivan. Yes. Alderman Clemens. No. Alderman Senate. No. Alderman Jetty. Yes. Alderman Tebow. Yes. Alderman Clee. No. Alderman Dowd. No. Alderman Kelly. No. Alderman Wilshire. No. Six yeas, eight nays. That motion fails. Motion before us is for final passage. Further discussion, Alderman <coughs> Thibault. Thanks, Madam President. I mean, just one quick point. I mean, how do we vote on this if we don't know what's right? So, I mean, it is a pretty big difference whether it's part of the bonding or if it's it's not. Uh, so. And we you got two people saying, I told you. well, we got people saying different things. So, I mean, <laughs> he didn't. We have our attorney here who is giving us the advice that we, we sought from him. All right. So I'm going to do what I want. Yeah. Again, we're getting into the concern of, of, of the bond amount rather than the debt service. We have other general obligation bonds that are being paid by a, another source of income. Remember we had that long discussion about the, the dams and the money, the, the revenue coming from the dams paying off the bonds. That doesn't count against the 30 million where it's coming out, the, the debt service is coming out of tax dollars. It's, it's, I mean, you could say it's ultimately coming out of somebody's pocket, but it's being covered by a source of income to pay off the bond debt service that's not in this budget book uh, per se as a general obligation bond. So it's the debt service and the debt service is being paid in this instance by fees. And so it's not showing up in debt service for like school buildings or, or other types of projects. Alderman Clemens. Yeah, and, and to further that, you know, we have other bonds like the, the TIF bonds that are paid for by the tax increment financing of the districts from which they are being used that are not paid for by the rest of the taxpayers in Nashua. So we, we do this quite often, and I've been on the board long enough to know that anytime we have a bond related to the sewer, it's paid for 
by the sewer fees. Mm -hmm. Further discussion? Motion is for final yeah, passage. One, one other quick thing. Uh, I'm pretty sure that these, this bonding needs to get taken care of because they need to start doing the work. They only get to do this work during the summer months. And now that the weather is, especially today, has turned to the, the good side, they need to get working on this because uh, uh, they do this work every year. They take a, a section they have to do and, and do this work. Motion is for final passage. All those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? That motion carries and resolution 2441 is declared duly adopted. Second reading of R-24-042, authorizing the mayor and city treasurer to issue bonds not to exceed $925,143 for various wastewater capital improvements. Alderwoman Kelly. Thank you, Madam President. I'd like to move for final passage of R-24-042. Motion is for final passage of resolution 2442. Discussion on that motion. Seeing none, all those in favor say aye. Aye. Opposed? That motion carries, and resolution 2442 is declared duly adopted. Alderman Lopez. Uh, I'd like to make a motion to make sure I'm doing the right one. <laughs> to remove from the table R24022. I'm sorry, I did the wrong one. I looked at it. <laughs> I'd like to make a motion to remove from the table R24043. You've heard the motion. Discussion? All those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? That motion carries. Third reading of R-24-043, approving the annual action plan for the Community Development Block Grant CDBG in Home Investment Partnership Home Programs for Fiscal Year 2025. Alderman Lopez. Um, so for clarification, uh, I'd like to make a motion for a final passage. Motion is for final passage. Discussion on that motion. This is, I'm sorry. Alderman, Alderman Lopez. This is just the second part of what we did earlier, um, and it's part of HUD's, HUD has a very formal structured process of you have to make your plan, you have to have your plan approved, you have to um, present it to the public, then you have to make sure HUD actually gives you enough money to do the plan, then amend your plan, show the public, and then approve it. But now we actually have to give authorization to enact the plan. Alderman Jody. I'm all set. That You're all set. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> the motion is for final passage of resolution 2440. No. 2443. <clears throat> Alderman Thibodeau. Just for clarity, um, so the other CVDG was to approve the requesting. This is to approve the plan that we made in the committee. So in the plan, we had a plan A, which was what we thought we were going to get and all of the allocations we made. And then the actual amount came in. The adjustments were made according to the plan B we had, um, which I don't think was really necessary, actually. Um, mm -hmm. And then now that we've approved the plan, now we have to give permission to actually give the money to the different agencies, fund the different departments, and all that. Right. Further discussion? All those in favor say aye. Aye. Opposed? That motion carries, and Resolution 2443 is declared duly adopted. Second reading of R-24-045, authorizing the mayor to enter into an amended transportation alternatives program federal aid project agreement with the state of New Hampshire for the purpose of upgrading sidewalks and creating bicycle lanes on Lock Street and Whitney Street and to accept and appropriate an additional $24,309.81 for the project. Alderman Sullivan. Thank you, Madam President. I'd like to make a motion for final passage of R24045 by roll call pursuant to Charter Section 49. You've heard the motion. Discussion on that motion. Alderman Clee. Uh, thank you, um, Madam President. Um, this is a, a project that's been near and dear to my heart since I became an alderman. It was um, in 2018 we applied for this grant. We were um, approved for the grant and it was to widen the sidewalks on Whitney and, um, and Lock Street. It also allows for a bike lane. It was part of the, I think the TAP program is, is what it's called, but it was the safe school, safe routes to school. It was um, a variety. It does not do the paving or 
change of the street, but it is for, for that particular thing. I, I really hope that you will look in favor of this. Additional monies have had to be given. It was granted in 2018. COVID came along, kind of delayed things, and now we're here in <coughs> 2024, and we're finally able to start this project. Um, and a lot of things have happened, so um, I think it's important that we approve it. This is from the day one has been an 80-20, where we get 80% from the state, and we have to kick in 20%. All the woman Kelly. Uh, thank you. Just I wholeheartedly support this and would love to see more of this around the city um, as we get up be able to have transportation alternatives and walkable cities. It helps with energy and environment. Climate change. Further discussion. Alderman Moran. Yeah, I would just ask all the bikers out there to uh, refrain from becoming bikers like they are in Cambridge. Those guys are very aggressive, uh, <laughs> but I don't think that happens here in Nashua. Further discussion. Alderman Thibodeau. Um, just point of clarity. So the the um, eighty twenty funds. So that was from the state or from the federal. Alderman Clay. It, it's a it's a state grant. I state grant. I have a feeling that it comes in from the federal to the state. <coughs> but it's a it, we applied through to the state. How the state is 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 funded? I'm not quite sure on this one. But we work through the state. The state has to release the funds and and so on. I do believe there's a federal component in it, but I think we work with the state. It comes in from the federal to the, to the state. But don't quote me on that. Further discussion? Seeing none, would the clerk please call the roll? Alderman Timmons. Yes. Alderman Moran. Yes. Alderman Thibodeau. Yes. Alderman Govea. Yes. Alderman Lopez. Yes. Alderman Sullivan. Yes. Alderman Clemens. Yes. Alderman Senate. Yes. Alderman Jetty. Yes. Alderman Tebow. Yes. Alderman Clee. Yes. Alderman Dowd. Yes. Alderman Kelly. Yes. Alderman Wilshire. Yes. 14 yeas, zero nays. Motion carries and resolution 2445 is declared duly adopted. Second reading of R-24-046, authorizing the mayor and city treasurer to issue bonds not to exceed $700,000 for various improvements at the Solid Waste Department Four Hills Landfill. Alderman Senate. Thank you, Madam President. I'd like to make a motion for final passage of R-24046. Motion is for final passage. Discussion on that motion. Seeing none, all those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? That motion carries and resolution 2446 is declared duly adopted. Second reading of R-24-053, authorizing the city of Nashua to enter into a master development agreement with Blaylock Holdings, LLC. Alderman DeVea. Thank you, Madam President. I move for final passage of R-24-053 and would like to speak to the motion. Alderman DeVea. Thank you. Uh, so this plan came through the Finance Committee and got unanimous approval. Uh, I would suggest anybody, if you have questions on that project, they gave a really good presentation and also the document itself is very informative. Tells you a lot about timelines and when they'll be actually working on it. So a lot of questions answered there for anybody of the public who uh, lives in the area or thinks they could potentially be impacted. That's a great starting point reference. Alderman Moran. Uh, thank you, Madam President. Uh, I echo uh, the comments from my colleague from Ward 1. Uh, and I also want to highlight um, that Director Cummings did uh, make a point uh, to state that um, the contribution to the trust fund, the housing trust fund, uh, would be looked at for a project regarding um, building of housing that has um, Section 8 um, components uh, for lower uh, to moderate income versus the uh, current 80% um, of the median income. Alderman Kelly. Uh, thank you. I just wanted to um, say that I think this plan is really thorough and I am excited to support it. I think this is a long time coming and I imagine I'm not going to steal Alderman Clemens' um, fire here because I know he grew up in the neighborhood, but I've been hearing about this parcel since I became an alderman. And this has been a lot of people working together to make sure we can finally clean this up and put some housing that we so very much need in the city. Alderman Clee. Uh, thank you, um, Madam President, and I and I hope that I don't take um, from Alderman Clemens. Um, <laughs> but but I, I did want to say that um, 
for as, as long as, you know, the last number of years, this has been in negotiation and um, one of the biggest things is the um, capping um, of the lagoons there and, and so on and I'm sure Alderman Clemens will speak to that but what I want, what I wanted to mention to this is that there was a lot of negotiating and give and take. It wasn't just like one side got everything. The reason why it's taken so long to go from committee to committee to coming to here and so on for us to actually come to an agreement is because there's been a lot of, um, no, you can't have that, well, I want this. And one of the things that is gonna come out of it, and while the city in the end will be paying for it, is that bridge that goes um, from that neighborhood across to Mine Falls, which is something that's been on the city's plan for a long time. Um, while Blaylock will be, the developer will be building it, the city will pay for it, and it's gonna cost us a lot less because it's part of their project. Um, and I made it very clear in the Finance Committee, if suddenly the cost for that goes up, are we now on the hook for the extra? And the answer was nope. This is the agreement, this is all we're paying for it, so if everything goes up. The other thing as part of that agreement is that um, they're going to keep it clean um, from snow and sun. Any major um, needs to that, to that bridge will be taken care of. Um, by the city, as it will be a city bridge, but um, they're going to do some small repairs, painting, and so on. So I think it really is a, a great, and I agree with what um, my colleague from Ward 1 had said, please watch the presentation. It was um, very precise, and I think we asked a lot of questions to, to clarify things, so, and um, I'll stop there. Alderman Clemens. Uh, thank you, Madam President. Yeah, so I, I didn't directly grow up in the neighborhood. However, I had my grandparents lived on Fairmont Heights, um, and a lot of my aunts and uncles lived in Little Florida um, growing up. And, you know, I, I can remember the tannery always being um, this place that my relatives would warn me, you know, don't go into the tannery, don't go over there. <laughs> because it was a toxic mess. And the, the amount of people in my family who were affected by cancer and things like that, uh, who lived in, in that neighborhood and, and did grow up in that neighborhood, is significant. Um, and, and there's a lot of other people who, who were from there uh, with the same issue. And you have to wonder, you know, is, is it because of the tannery and the things that they were doing there? Um, I think common sense would, would lead you to that. Um, so for this to come to finally come to fruition, I think is a, is a great uh, thing. I mean, I, I, being on the board of Alderman for as long as I have, I can remember having discussions with um, the previous mayor about different things that could be done, like removing the soil, bringing that out. And there was always a roadblock. There was always something that was in the way of that getting done. Um, you know, mostly it was because of the cost to the taxpayers. And what, what I think is the best part of this agreement is the fact that it's costing the taxpayers very little money, if not anything, really. We're waiving, we're waiving the back taxes, which in reality we would never see anyway. And the, the other portion of it is that um, while we're giving them a loan um, from the uh, housing trust fund, that's gonna be paid back. So, you know, <coughs> I look at all of these things, I look at the fact that the EPA finally has come around to, to agreeing to, to clean this up. We need more housing in Nashua, you know, and, I, and we're, we're going to get that out of it. Some of it is going to be affordable, maybe not to the degree that, that some of us would like, but again, that comes with a trade-off because remember, they're cleaning up a toxic mess. So the fact that we're getting any affordable housing in there is truly a testament to Director Cummings, Director Sullivan, the mayor, everybody else who has negotiated this deal. This, to me, in, in, in of all the things that I have 
been a part of on this Board of Aldermen. This is the biggest achievement. This is a win, win, win. It's a win for the neighborhood, it's a win for the developer, and it's a win for the entire city, for our future. So for all of those reasons, I'm, I'm supporting this and I hope uh, everybody here will. It's a wonderful plan and um, it, I'm happy to finally see it come to fruition. Alderman Lopez. Um, so the very first day that I was an alderman, right after, well, before I was sworn in, but after I won my election, my first election, I was approached by Sandy Belknap, uh, a resident in the um, Fairmont Street area, and she said this was, this was what we needed to do. And this was an impor important project. She told me about the history of the neighbors who'd been trying for 20 years to get a Superfund site cleaned up that never was allowed on the Superfund list. And um, she talked at length about the health issues that were happening, the kids that were, you know, setting up bike ramps, jumping over open uh, cesspools of, of carcinogens, you know, all the horror stories. And my thought at that time was, okay, so I was like kind of focusing on the inner city, not gentrification part. I didn't know I was like accepting a super fun site and it seemed completely unapproachable. But it was one of the first things I talked to uh, Mayor Donches about. It was the first things I talked about Director Marchant about. Um, there was very strong support from both. And <clears throat> it took years and a lot of a lot of annual um, neighborhood watch meetings where the question was, what are you guys doing about the tannery? And we didn't know if there would be a buyer. We knew that it would have to be somebody from the private sector who could do it because the city can't buy a piece of land and then spend hundreds of millions, if not more, to uh, remediate it. And during the initial stages of this, it looked impossible to clean up. You know, I, we had the environmental <coughs> advocates coming in talking about how we needed complete removal and how we needed to build a, a digester on the site. And these were the ways to properly do this. And the expenses were astronomical. Like I had a, a company call me from Canada that said, hey, we do the exact thing you guys are talking about. Um, and uh, this is what it would cost. And we're definitely telling you, don't try that. Um, it took someone with vision. It took a developer who was committed to the, to the, the project and also to the, the neighborhoods around it. And I think Blaylock has turned out to be that. They've really worked to engage the community and the neighbors, the neighbors who had a lot of very righteous concerns because they're gonna live right on the property. You don't just disturb a bunch of contaminants without making sure everyone <clears throat> around knows how they're gonna be affected, without making sure there's gonna be monitoring. And as was mentioned by previous speakers, it started to look like there was like the opportunities unfolding, the EPA was uh, coming and, and you know contributing at least uh, organizational support uh, at that time um, to try to get engaged neighbors and having those public hearings. And then the pandemic hit, and really would have been an opportunity for most developers to walk away and say, all right, I'm gonna go find something easier or simpler. But that's not what happened. The Blaylock stuck with it. Bernie personally engaged the neighbors repeatedly. He kept looking for new plans. He kept pursuing new funding. And he presented the city with a vision of what we could do with a site that has, <coughs> has over the years, really been, you know, not just abandoned, but misused. I know. Public Health and I were working on outreach to different homeless encampments there over the years, and there was a lot of them. A guy built a whole cabin in there and then was furious when someone else burned it down, and like, that property needs eyes on it. It needs people living in it. It needs, um, it needs life. And I think what's being proposed is a program that will respect the green space, respect the environmental um, access. It will provide greater access uh, by the, for the existing neighbors and the future neighbors <coughs> to Mine Falls. It has a lot of strengths. And, um, and then as a bonus, the extra revenue being put back into the um, housing trust fund is actually gonna be used for low income and, and you know, section eight types of housings, I believe. Um, <coughs> as a sidebar, it's my understanding also that that's kind of an unfortunate byproduct of how public housing is being transitioned. So. I think we can expect some pushback on, on how that project actually unfolds on the other side. But as far as this project is done and, and doing something about cleaning up an environmental toxic waste dump that the original owners just abandoned, we've done something amazing and something that I think uh, nationally can be looked at as, as a model. Like how did you manage to do this without the big government coming in and cleaning everything up? We managed to build a consensus from many, many, many partners, starting with the neighbors. 
Um, so I'm supporting this project as well. I'm looking forward to each step in its, its, um, its development. And of course, we're receptive to the concerns of uh, residents as they unfold. You know, we don't want billions of trucks driving through in the middle of the night, and we want to make sure that the construction is done in a respectful way. But it is, as Alderman Clemens said, one of the most important things any of us can do as a board for the future of our city, to clean this up and to put something there that we can all be proud of. Thank you. Further discussion? <clears throat> Seeing none, the motion is um, to enter into a master development agreement with Blaylock Coling Holdings. No further discussion. All those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? <clears throat> that motion carries, and resolution 2453 is declared <clears throat> duly adopted. Unfinished business ordinances. None. New business resolutions. First reading of R-24-054, amending the U.S. Department of Housing and Urban Development Annual Action Plan for Fiscal Year 2024 relative to the Community Development Block Grant CDBG Housing Improvements and Rental Improvements Programs. Additional sponsors. Alderman Timmons, Alderman Moran, Alderman Lopez, Alderman Senate, Alderman Clee, Alderman Dowd, Alderwoman Kelly, and myself. Given its first reading, I'll assign that to the Human Affairs Committee. First reading of R-24-055, relative to the transfer of 31,000 from the Department 161 Street Department Account <coughs> 51300 overtime to Department 177 <coughs> Parks and Recreation Account 54280 Building Grounds Maintenance. 11,000 in account 71623 park equipment 20,000 additional sponsors Alderman Moran and myself given its first reading I'll sign that to the budget review committee first reading of R-24-056 dissolving the housing expendable trust fund establishing a housing revolving fund in transferring funds into the housing revolving fund. Additional sponsors. Alderman Timmons, Alderman Clee, Alderman <coughs> Hayes, and myself. Given its first reading, I'll sign that to the Human Affairs Committee. Without objection, I'll suspend the rules to allow for the introduction of Resolution 2457 that was received after the agenda was prepared. First reading of R-24-057, relative to the adoption of the fiscal year 2025 proposed budget for the City of Nashua General Enterprise Special Revenue in Grant Funds. Uh, additional sponsors. Okay, given its first reading, I'll assign it to the Budget Review Committee and schedule a special Board of Aldermen public hearing on Monday, June 17, 2024 at 7 p.m at Nashua High School North Auditorium. New business ordinances. First reading of O-24-014, increasing fees and fines in the parking ordinances. Additional sponsors. Alderman Govea, Alderman Sullivan, Alderman Senate, Alderman Clee, Alderman Dowd, Alderman Thibodeau, and myself. Given its first reading, I'll assign that to the Personnel Administrative Affairs Committee. First reading of O-24-015, changing references to the Housing Trust Fund. Additional sponsors, Alderman Timmons, Alderman Kelly, and myself. Given its first reading, I'll assign that to the Human Affairs Committee. Period for general public comment. We have six speakers signed up. Um, and you have a three minute time limit. Our first speaker is Nicholas Scalera. Give your name and address for the record, please. Hello again, board. My name is Nicholas Scalera from Two Paddington Place here in Nashua. I'm here once again to urge you, the Board of Aldermen and Mayor of Nashua, to write, endorse, and pass a resolution in support of an immediate and lasting ceasefire in Gaza. For seven months now, we have been faced with the glaringly heinous and bloodthirsty nature of the military industrial complex and its subsidiaries. In an industry so objectively evil, even the unabashed war hawk, President Eisenhower, was cautious of its control over the American economy and political theater. 
But today we are being told to see it as a tool for liberation, a lever that can be pulled to bring democracy and strong Western values as a tool for liberation uh, all across uh, the ocean uh, and to quell the barbaric hordes. I, for one, don't agree that this is a viable long-term strategy, especially when the people receiving these munitions are doing great evils with them, evils that directly contradict American as well as international law. For weeks, we, we who have believed in peace and justice have been forced to listen to you, this board, wring your hands, and bemoan about violence and virtue signal about wanting a solution. To be frank, I don't think many of you actually want peace. Last time I was here, I read a passage from MLK's letter from a Birmingham jail where he critiqued the form of peace that many of you espouse, a negative peace, a peace merely defined by the absence of tension. I ask you again, would you have been silent about South African apartheid or during Jim Crow? To be silent in the face of injustice is one of humanity's greatest ills. It is an ill that rears its ugly head whenever a movement questions the status quo. Many of you have made it quite clear that you don't want us here. I respond again with a question of my own. Would you have made MLK feel unwelcome or Nelson Mandela? Should they have stopped their advocacy because it wasn't a local issue? The audacity of some, be it here on a lar or a larger platform, to equate the protested genocide to the genocide itself is beyond insulting. We have students here in our state being brutalized on college campuses for simply demanding their university not put their endowments, funded by the students' tuition dollars, into firms profiting off of genocide. The chair of the Jewish Studies Department at Dartmouth, herself Jewish, was thrown to the ground and violently arrested by police in riot gear. She has been banned from campus for six months. Please tell me again which side of these protests is anti-Semitic. One minute. When we think back to the fight against South African apartheid or Jim Crow, which do we see as the greater evil? The sit-ins at segregated diner counters or the systemic racism itself? I think the answer is clear, but as soon as it is about Palestine, then it gets complicated and you have to be nuanced. The sit-ins were illegal too. Rosa Parks was a criminal. Do we praise the Montgomery Police Department for keeping order on the streets like many have praised the NYPD and New Hampshire State Police? Many of you sitting here on this board were vocal proponents of the Black Lives Matter movement and the subsequent protests in 2020, as I was. BLM New Hampshire has unequivocally sided with seconds. the students and victims of the gross police brutality seen in our state and in our country. If it wasn't before, I hope it is now clear to all of you that this is a local issue. Outside of the fact that countless police departments across the country get training directly from the Israeli military, the status quo of our political discourse is to side with authority. If that were to be our heuristic for history, all of you would be on the side of George Wallace and Strom Thurmond, not MLK or Rosa Parks. You are on the side of oppression, oppression, and brutality. I ask you all to look yourselves in the mirror and ask if that is what you want to be remembered as. I know I wouldn't want to be. Thank you. Colby, Labrie, Frigant. Hello, uh, Colby LaBrie, Parisian. I'm 106 Gilson Road, Ashwin, New Hampshire. Um, there was a lot has happened since the last time I was here. Um, the time-honored tradition of student protests have been all over the headlines and flooding news feeds. Most <clears throat> of the hosts from the major stations are <laughs> siding with another American tradition, uh, suppression of those protests. I'm incredibly heartened by these students in New Hampshire that are um, and beyond who are putting their degrees and careers on the line for people most have never met. In time, I believe history books will refer to them with admiration. I ask you folks tonight not to admire, but to show support to the root of the cause by passing a ceasefire resolution. There's been a lot of focus on those opposed to the protests who feel unsafe, which is fair, um, and bound to happen whenever protests happen. Um, it's shifting focus away from the elephant in the room. Um, a report by the Euromed Human Rights Monitor says on January 17th, the Israeli military detonated 315 mines to destroy uh, the Gaza Strip's last standing <coughs> university, Israel University, south of Gaza City. Um, I'm sure a lot of them wish that they could just be protesting on their campus. Uh, we have come here multiple times to explain the need and the importance of a city ceasefire resolution, and I expect we will continue to do so. So I will see you next time. Thank you for your time. Margaret St. Louis. Hello, I'm Margaret. I live at 106 Gilson Road. Um, in lieu of the board not presenting a resolution, we have requested, we've drafted our own, and I'd like to submit some prints out for distribution, if that's okay. You can hand it to Alderman Clemens. Okay, so. um, I'll read that for you now, though. Um, we urgently request you, please bring this to a vote as soon as possible. Um, whereas the Board of Aldermen recognizes that all human life is precious, regardless of race, religion, nationality, or nationality. 
Whereas since the Hamas attack of October 7th, 2023, Israel has engaged in dis disproportionate and indiscriminate military companion against the people of Gaza, which has killed at least 34,000 Palestinians, 70% of whom women are of whom are women and children. And whereas the Israeli military's companion of bombardment, siege, and invasion in in Gaza has resulted in the displacement of more than 85,000 of Gaza's 2.2 million in 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 uh, anyway, um, destroyed more than 70% of homes and severely damaged nearly every healthcare facility in Gaza. And whereas the Israeli military's campaign of bombardment, siege, and invasion in Gaza is funded in large by part of U.S. taxes in the form of unconditional military aid pack packages. And whereas through their federal taxes, national residents contribute more than $1.3 million per year to the Israeli military. And whereas rendering Gaza uninhabitable un um, likely amounts to collective pu punishment under Article 33 of the Fourth um, um, of C Convention One and minute. to genocide under the um, United Na Nations Convention on the prevention of, and punishment of the crime of genocide. And whereas residents of Nashua City refuse to be complicit in Israel's campaign of destruction in Gaza through any partnership or investment the city may have with companies or organizations who profit from the genocide. Or where, and whereas the city of Nashua's federal representative delegation led by Annie Custard, Maggie Hassan, and Jean Shaheen have failed to represent the urgent humanitarian and diplomatic interest of residents of the, of Nashua, the city of Nashua, New Hampshire. Uh, now, therefore, be it res resolved that the Nashua Board of Aldermen joins with representatives of other New Hampshire cities in calling on our president and our federal representatives, delegations to demand an immediate and enduring ceasefire. The provision Time. of life saving humanitarian aid in Gaza, the, the release of up. all hostages, detainees, and political prisoners on both sides. Thank you. Fred <clears throat> Tebow. Well, my name is Fred Tebow. I was at 24 Cheyenne Drive. Between 13 and 15 February 1945, the Americans and the Brits, with 1,300 heavy bombers, dropped 4,000 tons of high explosive bombs and incendiary devices on the city of Dresden in Germany. The bombings and the resulting firestorm destroyed more than 1,600 acres of the city, and 25,000 people were killed. On August 6, 1945, the United States dropped an atomic bomb, 15,000 tons of TNT on Hiroshima, which had a population of 255,000, and it ultimately killed 140,000 people, 140,000. On August 9th, the United States dropped a atomic bomb of 21,000 tons of TNT in Nagasaki, community of 195,000, about twice the city of Nashua, 74,000 people were killed, many due to radiation poisoning. There were no demonstrations, there were no warnings, there were no airdrop leaflets, there was no evacuation. Japan surrendered on 15 August 1945, six days after the dropping of the bomb on Nagasaki. Now let's talk about Israel. On October 7, over 1,100 Israelis were killed and over 100 hostages were taken by Hamas terrorists. Compared with the U.S. population of 333 million in the U.S. versus 9.5 million in the state of Israel, this would scale to 40,000 Americans killed, and 3,500 hostages taken. What do you think 
America would do if they had a similar terrorist attack. The pro-Palestinian demonstrators in this room should ask for an immediate surrender of Hamas as opposed to a ceasefire or ceasefire seconds. resolution. The same as Germany and Japan did surrender and end of World War II. Thank you. Bill Ferrero. My name is Bill Ferrio. My home was at number 35, Indian Rock Road. So a few weeks back, there was a special meeting that was held. And the subject was the troubling trend of high outside legal costs. So it was a very important subject, important enough to have a special meeting, and important enough for a very lengthy slide presentation to be created. So a couple days after that, I sent email to the presenter, asked to see the slides, because they were not posted on the city's website at that time. It seemed like a very trivial, simple request. So a few days later, I got a response, but it was not from the uh, present presenter. It was from Mr. Perrin, the records administrator, telling me that my request, my trivial request, had been turned into a right to know. I, I just wanted to see the nine slides that were presented at that public meeting. And I didn't see them on the city's website because they weren't there at that time. I didn't ask for a right to know. We get told all the time about the troubling costs of right to know requests. Why would my simple request become a right to know? It seems kind of hypocritical. I asked to see the nine slides that were presented at this public meeting a couple days ago to talk about outside legal costs. And it gets turned into a, a right to know. It could have been responded to with a couple of clicks, click, click, send. That's all that's necessary. So anyway, the response I got, I got a letter. It was a very lengthy letter that was created, two-page letter. There was a, a letter, that, so this letter said, it said many things. One of the things it said was, the city's record administrator conducted a reasonable search. I mean, that's bizarre. There was no search required. These slides are probably sitting on the presenter's laptop in the folder called Recent Files. One minute. And then this letter, it was addressed to me, and it was CC'd to the legal department, CC'd to Director Cummings, and what looks like a right to know depository as well. In addition to the letter, the email that was sent to me told me I had to go into a shared site, create an account just to see these nine slides. The email didn't just go to me, it went, again, to Mr. Cummings, to the legal department again, to the mayor's office. 30 seconds. To risk management, and to someone in the clerk's office. I only wanted to see the nine slides that were presented in a public meeting about troubling costs. How much was spent on this process, slapping my request around, forwarding it to six or eight people, and doing this supposed reasonable search? Why is the city so hypocritical and litigious about a simple request. The nine slides included a spreadsheet that talked about the Time. different cases Time and, the, up, and the uh, platens, the, excuse me, the, the platens and the costs. How many of these costs could sir, have been eliminated? Your by, time is up. Thank you. Thank you. Bradley Conway. <clears throat> Hi, my name is Bradley Conway. I'm from Manchester, and um, this is a fiery one, so. <clears throat> Nashua City Alderman, we're here again to hold you all accountable for your inaction to stop the genocide in Gaza. More than a million people are being starved. Starvation is a form of torture. Citizens of Nashua are forced to pay for it, and you're doing nothing to stop it, despite weeks of appeal. You have power, and you're not using it. You know as well as we do that your inaction is unleashing a suffering into this world that will endanger the lives of every resident of Nashua. Take a position. Stand against cruelty. How many more residents will you ignore? How many does it take to pass a resolution? The world is truly becoming more of a nightmare every day. It feels like evil is boiling over everywhere, despite our best intentions to raise the alarm. I feel like my heart is being dragged behind a bus. Words are becoming meaningless. 
Our basic rights to free speech as Americans are being undermined because Americans are unable to exercise a shred of influence over their democratically elected leaders at any level. Federal, state, and local leaders continue to say that protesting genocide is anti-Semitic and appears to be on track to become illegal. Does anyone else feel like the criminalization of, of protest against an actual genocide makes literally everybody else feel unsafe? Suppression of speech and protest is not just happening on campuses. We all know it's happening here at City Hall in Nashua too. I know I don't want to be here. I know that the board would rather us all not show up, but since this issue is so relevant to the city and its residents, and because of the scale of the catastrophe being so unprecedented and unfathomable, we are compelled to show up yet again. I don't think for one second that you all think this is a complicated issue. I think you can't wait to hear the new disingenuous Israeli talking points being parroted by US officials so you can throw up your hands and excuse yourselves from the conversation. I think you just don't want to be on record taking a stand one way or the other. Unfortunately for you, residents of Nashua know that you have taken a position, namely that you will not use your position to save lives or to stand up for your constituents in the face of extreme gaslighting. Please stop running from this and acknowledge that our federal leaders, including Maggie Hassan, Annie Custer, and Jean Shaheen, are behaving insidiously to undermine life and liberty around the globe. Please introduce our resolution in new business and bring it to a vote. Maybe it won't pass, but as our leaders, we want you to take a position on the issues that we've raised. If our resolution doesn't pass, please modify it. Another seconds. option is that you could make a verbal motion tonight to resolve that the city of Nashua calls for an immediate permanent ceasefire and put it to a vote. Maybe call for the city to divest its funds from genocide. You have too much power to do nothing. Please use your position to show solidarity with Palestine and promise us in writing via your resolution process that you are committed to building a city and a future free from the lies <coughs> and destruction necess necessitated by US domestic and foreign policy. Thank you. Remarks by members of the board. I'm gonna start over here tonight. Alderman Moran. Uh, thank you, Madam President. Uh, first, I would just like to uh, thank the principal and the staff of Bicentennial Elementary School. Uh, last Friday, I was able to attend um, my very first Light Up the Night. Um, my daughter is um, a third grader there, and uh, she wanted to go. It was the first year at Bicentennial. <coughs> and the, the staff and the uh, principal and everyone put on a great uh, event. There were uh, teachers dressed up as clowns. There were um, uh, animal with balloons and uh, face painting and a whole bunch of other stuff and food trucks, which was great. Um, so I want to express my appreciation to the entire staff at uh, Bias and Tail for putting that uh, on for the kids. I uh, want to bring everyone's attention that it is Mental Health Awareness Month, uh, the month of May. Keep an eye out. Uh, I think it's the Fisher Cats and Anthem Blue Cross Blue Shield are having a special uh, night uh, that encourage everyone to wear blue, which is the mental health and autism and many other um, uh, related uh, sy uh, color symbols for, for um, that particular. Um, I lost my words. It didn't happen frequently. Um, that particular. Um, Cause? Yeah, awareness, I guess, sorry. Um, so moving on then. Uh, I hope everyone had a great Mother's Day. And also coming up, I hope everyone enjoys the unofficial start of summer uh, and has a great Memorial Day. Thank you. Alderman Gavea. Thank you, Madam President. So I received a uh, email earlier this week from a uh, kid of a former alderman member here in the city of Nashua, Charles Bichard. Uh, he was a native of Nashua. He passed at 105 on May 3rd. Yeah. Served uh, two terms on the Board of Aldermen from 1970 to 1974. Served in the United States Army, the 126th Army Airways Communication System Quadrant from 1942 to 1946. Uh, I would like to send my uh, deepest sympathy to the uh, family. Alderman Lopez. Um, so first I want to comment on the Board of Education. Um, I, I wanted to watch the meeting last night instead of the ad hoc committee because I was bothered by discussions that have come up in past meetings about how the aldermen are you know, not taking education seriously, not supporting the Board of Education. There's this increasing divide. So 
uh, we had brought it up in the JSSBC, and I thought we had done a good job of inviting them and engaging them and saying, well, come to the ad hoc committee. This is what's going on citywide. These are things you know, that, that are in context, but there's always ways to, to find support for the things that are important. And so I was looking for acknowledgement of that or maybe a pass on, and I, in my opinion, what was presented to the Board of Education was a very selective interpretation of the events at the ad hoc committee. And I think it's important for this board to watch those meetings periodically and see what is being said about this board. Because I don't think the characterizations are necessarily fair. Um, I think some, some definitive actions are being justified by our responses and our efforts to attend to taxpayer needs, including a meeting where they attempted to set a date for voting to close Mount Pleasant. And then after all of their discussion, realized that none of them could make it to the meeting that they were having. Um, but they want to call the question, and they want to make that motion, and they want to attribute that to our decisions here, which is very obviously a school board decision and a matter of their priorities and their role to exercise. They, they questioned whether or not several of us who have run for election would actually make good on our agreements to support the Mount Pleasant community and, and Mount Pleasant. They haven't even made a request of us yet. And this came up at previous meetings that they haven't asked us for anything. They haven't come up with a plan. The only action that's been taken on this issue at all is Alderman Dowd's uh, proposal that we find uh, unexpended revenue to do a citywide evaluation of the school buildings so we could at least have an informed decision about what condition the buildings are in and what we could expect coming down the line before <coughs> making decisions about one specific building. So I found the, the meeting frustrating, but I think it's important for everybody to watch it because mm -hmm. a lot of these comments are being made about us. <clears throat> they, they challenged the mayor to come forward and speak to the, the people um, of Mount Pleasant about you know, his support and what his plan is for that. So whether we want to or not, and whether it's a priority for us or not, it's coming. And we're going to have to make decisions about how to support one direction or another and how to connect with the Board of Education, because they clearly want to work more closely with us um, and are acting on their own um, regardless. Um, with regards to the comments that were made tonight um, regarding uh, the Palestine um, situation, I agree with the concerns that are being raised. I think there's support for it that's growing in the federal government too. Recently, there were President Biden asked to have a report prepared to Congress, assuring Congress that all of our weapons were being used in um, ways that were consistent with uh, our guidelines and with international law. And a number of uh, federal agencies made official concern, expressed official concerns. So it is something that there's definitely a lot of area for concern with. Um, personally, I am not in favor of divesting from military supports here in Nashville because I believe Nashville citizens are working and doing their jobs uh, because they're trying to pay their, trying to provide for their families. They're, they have a strong sense of patriotism and they don't, they're not doing this so that weapons can be made to kill people in Gaza. I think that's where we need to focus efforts on the federal level and political advocacy there. Regardless of whether I believe that, <laughs> I see that people are still coming uh, every week and I'm listening. I'm frustrated by the, the Gaza situation myself. I think there is the practical reality of whether this board is feeling like it is um, being engaged in a productive manner. I don't feel compelled to try to startle my fellow board members or put them on the spot with an impromptu vote to soothe my conscience. If I put a resolution forward of any kind, it will go through the regular channels as required so that the other aldermen can view that and see it so that members of the public can see that as well and come and express their opinions. Because as much as there is an organized movement supporting Palestine's position in the situation, there is definitely a lot of mixed feelings and other opinions that are present too. And whether or not they're equally as informed as the people who are coming tonight, uh, or whether or not they're as prepared or organized, they are still valid. And it is not my impression that my constituents have a uniform voice on any of these particular issues. Um, finally, I just wanted to comment, <coughs> the uh, motion, the item was tabled before I could say anything regarding it, um, but I appreciate Alderman Moran bringing up the presentation of a homeless shelter. Um, I think that's important for us to, to view as a high priority in the city because we are struggling with uh, an increase and a surge in homelessness and there are some, 
some environmental reasons that's happening. Part of it is because we're getting lots of people from other parts of the state that haven't been able to cultivate their own support networks. Part of it is because there is a, a substance use uh, crisis and there's a large number of housing programs and support programs in the city where people don't always succeed. But part of it is just because we don't have enough partners in the, in the city to support each other and to work off of each other and to, to play. We need, more, we need more shelters and we need more entities that are willing to do that. We saw what happens when we only have one player addressing a need with stepping stones. And it was tragic not only that that program and all of the board members and their vision for what they could do for people in need collapsed, but it was terrible what happened to the people who were in the program. And ultimately that became the city's problem anyway. The city still had to work with finding housing supports and, and connecting those people. Um, and thankfully the continuum of care was able to come together and at least pr provide options for those people to pursue. So I think that presentation which came up at the ad hoc meeting two weeks ago um, and the, the future presentations by uh, public health will be very important to watch and I encourage my fellow aldermen to do so. Thank you. Alderman Sullivan. Thank you very much. Uh, congratulations to our new CFO tax collector, Don Enright. Concord's loss is our gain, for sure. Uh, sorry about that. Uh, anyway, she was uh, named tonight, so congratulations to her. And also, I wanted to extend my congratulations to Tricia Kaufman, the brand new principal at uh, New Searles Elementary. Thanks. Alderman Clements. Thank you, Madam President. Um, just want to address a couple of things um, to, to the folks who showed up tonight. Uh, thank you for coming. Um, I, I do want to tell you that you're, you're, at least in my opinion, welcome here. The mic is for anyone to address anything of concern, and that's its purpose. And um, so thank you. I do want to say that um, I am concerned as well in regards to the some of the actions going on uh, with with in regards to the protests. Um, I think that there are uh, concerns there that we are quashing people's uh, freedom of speech, and I think we need to be careful that we don't fall down a slippery slope of doing that. Um, so I would hope that as these uh, protests will continue, uh, that you know we we respect each other and we respect each other's right to protest and to say how we feel. Because if we lose the First Amendment, then we lose all of them. Uh, so. With that said, I want to move on to a different topic. I want to just congratulate CFO Griffin in his retirement. I wish him well. He has served the city tremendously. I think he started here in 2010, which would have been my second year on the Board of Aldermen. And uh, he, his guidance has led us to uh, us having you know, a triple A bond rating to making sure that our budgets are carefully crafted, <coughs> uh, that our spending uh, has been under control. Um, so I, I, I just want to thank him for all of his leadership over the years, and um, you'll always have a, a, a welcome uh, when you come here. So thank you. Alderman Senate. Thank you, Madam President. I have a few things tonight. Um, I'd like to start by um, echoing uh, Alderman Clement's comments in regard to public comment and the means that people choose to use that for. Um, I agree wholeheartedly that the public comment period is for people to come and say what's on their mind. I know in the past in this chamber there have been efforts brought up at times to limit what people can and can you can't use that uh, that time period for, and I had always been as a citizen uh, opposed to those efforts and I'll, I'll continue to be opposed to those efforts that that's the public's time and I, I would never presume to ask somebody to not come 
before this board and speak their mind. Um, moving on from that, a uh, couple of folks that I'd like to recognize throughout the city. Uh, start with Nashville Fire Rescue. Um, I was out of town over the weekend and I was alerted to a fire in the um, housing complex over on Major Drive off of Burke Street. Uh, that's a really scary situation uh, given the age of those units and the proximity of them to each other. But um, fortunately, due to the uh, professionalism of our, uh, of our fire department, that was contained to a single unit. Um, it's my understanding, unfortunately, that the, um, the residents of that unit did lose a family pet. Uh, but fortunately, no human lives were lost. And um, it's my understanding that there were no major injuries. So. Um, Big thanks to National Fire Rescue for their continued efforts in uh, helping keep the city safe. <clears throat> On a happier note, I'd like to recognize our uh, energy manager, Doria Brown, who was uh, recently named the 2024 Young Professional Energy Champion at last week's New Hampshire Energy Week awards ceremony. Um, Ms. Brown has been doing incredible work for this city, as we just saw tonight, uh, accepting the new um, energy rate for the coming uh, years. Um, it's, if I read this correctly, I believe she's the youngest energy manager in the state of New Hampshire. So it, I think it's really exciting for the city of Nashville to have um, a young professional like Miss Brown doing such great work to, uh, you know, help improve the lives of the uh, residents of Nashua. And then uh, finally, I would like to uh, extend my thanks to Alderman Moran for uh, extending the invitation to me a couple of weeks ago to attend a screening over at the um, National Center for the Arts of The 50, which was a very eye-opening eye -opening and sobering uh, film documenting the rehabilitation of um, 50 uh, California inmates in the uh, California penal system who were selected to take part in a uh, program that allowed them upon release to become substance use counselors. Um, what a creative solution to a problem like prison overcrowding. Um, and to be able to be present and to briefly hear one of those gentlemen actually speak um, in very sobering terms about his past and his experiences, um, it, it really was. It was an eye-opening experience. I, I really do appreciate Alderman Moran extending that invitation. And I, I think that all goes to show that, um, you know, that, that's, that's a problem in a state as massive as California, but I don't think creative solutions are, are certainly limited to our neighbors out on the West Coast. And it, it really shows what could be done with a little bit of forward thinking and a creative mindset. That's all I've got tonight. Alderman. Hebo. Thank you, Madam President. I got a few things as always. Um, I had a great spending cap joke to start, but uh, Alderman Tebow went a different way, so I appreciate that. I do appreciate his comments tonight uh, and everybody's comments. I think there's a, a miss or a myth or, or a misconception out there that we, any of us, would, would want to stop people from coming here and speaking, and uh, maybe speaking for all of us, but I really don't think that's the case. I think people can come and speak and have their time and, and say whatever they want to say. And I think that's a good thing uh, for us in Nashua. It's a good thing for the country. And, and whether I differ with anybody here, I think that's, I, I, don't, I, I would say that I don't think anyone would, would try to stop that. So um, I'm not sure why that's out there because I, I just don't think it's true. Um, you know, another thing that I don't get to is, you know, I am, I've been very anti nonsensical right to know requests because I think sometimes we get more than we should. I don't know why we couldn't, if something's in a public meeting on a PowerPoint, I'm not so sure why that was such a, such a difficult get. So, uh, you know, I have to, um, thank you for coming out today and speaking on that, because I, I don't understand why, if it was public, just email one of us if we have it, just give it to them. I, I don't understand why we can't do that. Um, uh, let's see, so, one thing that was concerning tonight is the whole tabling of the, the, I, I, the, the proposal to look at the parking garages. Um, and I, you know, applaud Alderman Kelly for, or Alderman Kelly for 
not tabling it and just saying that we should table it but not actually tabling it because we had some aldermen and all the women who had their hands up and I would have loved to hear them what they said. This went through two committees and got to us and I think it was important enough to direct a photo and her team that we should at least have a little conversation. We talked more about the tannery, which we all knew 100% was gonna go through. We all want that, there was no doubt about that. But this, I thought we should have spent just a little more time. Maybe I would have went a different vote. And maybe I would have voted to table it as well. I, I just thought that when we table stuff, and I think it's, it's, a, it's a tactic to stop people from, from going forward and, and having any more debate. And I think that's what we need to have here. That's why we're here, we need to debate issues and speak about stuff. And um, it was close enough vote, eight to six, that we had almost 50-50% of people that wanted to, to go different ways. So I think it's important that we have those discussions. Um, just to say I'm not copying Alderman Gavay, I did have this up. Um, uh, I, I too wanted to recognize, and I didn't know Alderman uh, Bayshard at all, um, but to see that he served us well in the 70s and he was 105, I'm guessing he was the longest uh, a living alderman at the time. I, mean, I don't think anybody was over 105. Um, alderman alderman Jetty is probably the next oldest yes. living. Oh, cool. He wasn't 105 when he was an alderman. Alderman Jetty, are you 100? <laughs> I think he may have been my postman at one time um, when I was a kid. And, uh, you know, I'm certainly, he went to the same church as my grandparents. So I'm cer certain that they knew each other. They were would have been around the same age. So I just wanted to give condolences to that, his family and to recognize him. And lastly, this weekend, my daughter is graduating from college, and I just wanted to congratulate her, Libby. Um, she's come a long way, graduating at the top of her uh, biology department with the highest grade in, in biology. So I just wanted to recognize her, so thank you. Alderman Clay. Uh, thank you, um, Madam President. Um, I try never to criticize another board or organization, but much of what um, uh, my colleague from Ward 4 has said, um, I think we should be paying a little bit more attention to the Board of Ed. We don't tell them how to spend their budget, we just give them the bottom line. There's lots of noise going on that we're not giving them a seat at the table, but they did c come and present. Why are they any different than the National Fire Rescue or the National PD? or any other department that's not on that committee. They are no different. So why do they deserve a seat at the table more than anybody else? They were allowed to present, they were allowed to bring that. And the truth be told, their comments even here were, well, we, we can't make any decisions until you tell us what we can do. Well, no, the rule was you come to us, tell us what your priorities and what your needs are, and they have not done that. They have failed to do that time and time again and yet they want to say it's the Board of Aldermen. They want to tell the, the parents of Mount Pleasant that it's going to be closed because the Board of Aldermen won't give them $30 million yet. We really don't know that it's $30 million. It could be more, it could be less. Is the $30 million needed to be done all at once? We don't know because they don't have a plan. They talk about it, the Board of, of um, Ed wanting to close Mount Pleasant and Amherst Street and then build a brand new school on Sergeant Ave Park. That ain't gonna happen as far as I'm concerned. Um, but I'm only one voice here. Um, I just, I'm, they've created this problem with Mount Pleasant by not funding it year after year after decade after decade. And then they wanna turn around and say it's the Board of Aldermen's fault. Well, you know, look at yourselves. Um, and I apologize for being so angry, but Mount Pleasant is very important to me and I think that they have already decided this is what they're going to do, and now they're trying to deflect it from themselves and rather say it's the Board of Aldermen's fault. Well, it's not. It's your fault. And I've tried speaking candidly with, um, and I will say the President, and um, based on the last meetings that I've heard, I truly feel like I've been given lip service, and I'm very upset by it. Um, but I'm gonna leave my comments there. Um, and I apologize for my angry tone, um, but I am disgusted by it. And I do want to congratulate um, CFO Griffin on his retirement. I also want to congratulate um, the uh, Dawn Enright, who will be taking his place. She, she is very well qualified, but she does have big shoes to fill. And I'm glad that CFO Griffin will not be leaving us completely. Um, and thank you, Madam President.
Alderman Kelly. Uh, thank you. I just wanted to comment on the budget book. I'm looking forward to digging into it, and I happened to run into um, Megan Karen, and she was eating from the, the uh, snack dispenser, and I told her she should go home and take the rest because these were done. So um, thank you to everybody and their hard work on that, and I know that we kick off the um, in-person meetings this Thursday, so I'm sure we'll have lots of fun with the budget committee this year. Um, I also wanted to point out just a couple of community events. I know this weekend is the Greek Food Festival, which I love. Um, and also, PAL's um, Cone with a Cop is on Saturday from 12 to 3 at Hayward's, and that's one of the, my, my son's favorite events of the year. Well said. I would also like to thank Alderman Moran for the invitation to the 50 film um, showing at the Performing Arts Center. It was very well done. I thought, I, I was very impressed with it, the whole concept behind. 50 and, and how it evolved and it was really very good so thank you for that and thank you Alderman Senate for coming. sure um, I would also like to congratulate Doria Brown and all her successes since she's been with us she's been a wonderful addition to the city and I, I hope she continues to uh, to work for us um, and that's all I have committee announcements Alderman Dowd <laughs> As you can tell by the uh, book on your desk, uh, the FY25 budget meeting start on Thursday. It's uh, general government. And I ask that the budget committee, as we go through these meetings, since they're so close together and, and we have such limited time between now and the final approval, that you look at the section in the book before the meetings that we're going to have and come up with any questions you might have. You might also notice that if you got the budget uh, agenda for this coming Thursday, it has letters from, from some of the smaller uh, departments. Um, most and, important. What? The smaller and most important. <laughs> <laughs> you can tell that legal was one of those. Um, they are to overview their particular budgets and they're, they're in the past, I don't know how many years I've been chair of budget, but there usually is no questions for them. Uh, for instance, one's the Board of Aldermen, and we know where that is, so. But if you do have questions with any of those depart uh, d departments that had the, the letter submitted, you can send them an email <coughs> asking the question, but have the response go to Donna, so she can send it to all the aldermen. Uh, so that everybody has the same answer. Uh, but you can see that most of the ones that we are, have submitted the letters, uh, while being important, <laughs> are ones that we, you know, pretty much there's not a lot that we have to say about their budgets, and, and, and uh, the questions are usually pretty minimal. So, um, and that's all I had to say on that. All the woman Kelly. I was going to move to adjourn, but I saw oh. my hands up. Alderman Lopez. Uh, the Human Affairs Committee, a very important committee, uh, is meeting on May 20th, uh, but we had to move our meeting to 7.30 to accommodate a meeting on debt service. So Alderman Dowd, I will bring my question about that to that. Um, but May 20th, we'll be meeting with the Human Affairs Committee. Thank you. Alderman Moran. Thank you, Madam President. Uh, PDC was canceled this month to make room for budget. I believe um, June 24th or 25th will be a joint with infrastructure uh, so we can also make room for budget but with that um, <clears throat> I was made a very important I was made aware of very important information the Bruins won and they moved on to yep. the next game <laughs> the information probably didn't come from Alderman Dowd just one last thing uh, our city clerk Healy is now the president of the city clerks and town clerks in the state of New Hampshire his picture was in the paper and uh, congratulations on, on that. Yes, yeah, seize power. <laughs> All the woman Kelly. I'd like to make a motion to adjourn. The motion is to adjourn. All those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? We are adjourned at 9.55 p.m. Thank you.